In this video, we're looking at three tips that you can use to draw more attention to your miniatures. Let's get straight to the point. Nice. When I see a miniature, what gets my attention? I'm sure that you'll agree that these three elements can give a night and day effect to how your miniatures are viewed. They might not be obvious at first, and that might be the reason you're not applying these tips. That's a disservice to you and your miniatures potential. Some of the following themes and examples I have explained before in previous videos, but today I'm going to dive in depth as to why they should be given more time of day and not left to the side. Hello everyone, my name is Big Bear. I'm a Hero Forge content creator and just the best editor. I hate to be the, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at my last video, I'm not about that. I rendered my last video incorrectly and wiped all my footage. So my editing software couldn't export it again. Top quality right there, but hey, don't blame me. I'm just a bear. But that is not why you are here. You're here for this. Uh, what I actually meant to say was <laughs> Today we're sheepishly jumping off the top rope and diving into three tips that you can apply to your miniature to draw more attention to them. Attention. attention. We all want it. I for one created a YouTube channel. When viewing a miniature, what takes our eyes and locks us into it? I boiled it down to these three elements. Detail, creativity, and lighting. Huge disclaimer, and I couldn't stress this enough, don't compare your miniatures to other people. Maybe that's a secret shadow tip for this video. There are some amazing miniatures out there and I'm sure it took people way too long to make. And some people have been designing miniatures for years. So despite applying these tips, don't be disheartened if it doesn't take you to the top of the Reddit leaderboard. Consider applying these tips and comparing them to miniatures you've made in the past. Assess the things you do and don't like and boom. You've just participated in improvement. Good job, let's keep it moving. Number one, detail to create a story. In my personal opinion, I believe every miniature should have a story. Like a painting, it should convey endless interpretations. They can be obvious, like having your character look up and out as they've struck a heavy blow. Or they can be more subtle, like a mysterious ooze pouring from an even more mysterious eye embedded in a skeleton's head. There are great detailing options in your model's positioning and use of decals. Now, details might not be what draws us in, but it's what keeps us staring at the painting once we're there. Remember, you can use the decal's ability to wrap, scale, go up, down, left and right to put any assortment of details across weapons, armor or the miniature to enhance their look. Put a silver line down the edge of your sword to make it look sharpened. Combine multiple body lines to create new skin textures and give faded scars to an otherwise well-dressed bureaucrat that has never looked like he's seen battle. Horns for hair, double miniature hairdos, extra arms to hold knickknacks to push themes or occupations, and or blow up some decal extra large and make it look like your mini is turning invisible. It's this shit right here that really gets me excited. Number knee. That's two in Japanese for all you. Creativity to curiosity. I'll put my money on the fact that at least once you've said, how the hell did they do that? I've seen recreations of beloved characters or reimaginings of those unillustrated. It isn't until you get your grimy little hands on that miniature link do you realize how simple yet complicated it all is. For me, creativity in Hero Forge is the use of items in a way that they were not intended to be used. And it's always those unexpected creations that draw our attention. Take a large hammer, for instance. A weapon, right? Wrong. Throw it on a tail, get crafty for a few hours, and voila, a new headpiece. Horns on your head to look edgy and cool? Wrong! Horns used to create stem-like textures, bringing this little mushroom boy to life so that he may look edgy and cool. Credit to Mad Psycho 27 for that one. Speaking of Redditors, did you want to know how a red dingo made this little spaceman? I sure did. And I would have never guessed it involved breaking the neck of a second glitched mini alien head. I went ahead and tried to recreate this mini and then thought, that's stealing. So I went back to the drawing board to try and make my own using the same technique. Lo and behold, I found myself creating yet another Power Rangers villain. That feeling you get when you see a miniature like this, that's curiosity and it's amazing. Look, I love it when creators share their links, but there is something truly special about not knowing how it's done. 
Next time you're making a mini, consider trying to replicate based on nothing but image. You never know what unintentional creation or skill you may just build. Last but not least, we want to draw people in by lighting our art so that it's pleasant and easy to digest. If you haven't already experienced this, I challenge you to see the difference between a final digital product of a miniature versus what it looks like on the website. Huge difference. I bring this up because shadows, directional lighting and backdrops make a difference. But not all of us have pro, you know? So no pro, where go? I show. Here, here and here. Use these three free sites. Quick tools, Photopi and Canva. I'm no digital art pro, but I know these sites, especially Canva and Photopi have all you need to boost the look of your next miniature. I know it might not hit the sweet spot that you often see with the pro subscription, but if you don't have access to it, know there are great alternatives to display your creation. Once you have finished with your miniature, pose accordingly, take a screenshot and import that into Quick Tools. Once you've cleared your background, download the image and throw it into Canva. Go nuts with the creative elements that the site has to offer. Additionally, you can actually do this on Photopi as it is more of a Photoshop replica. I'm not personally too handy with Photoshop, so I personally prefer Canva. I would suggest grabbing a gradient graphic and tossing it behind your miniature, then playing around with some shadows to help bring your miniature forward. Doing these small editing changes will help differentiate your post from the next. And because it is not the boring bland background you get on the website, it is sure to bring more people's eyes in. So there you have three tips to help draw your attention to your next miniature and foreseeable diabolical creations. I don't have to tell you guys how to subscribe. I'm sure you that's old by now. There's no pressure, just do it. I'm really grateful for the helpful tips and suggestions you guys have been posting in the comments. It's really amazing to see this community come together and I'm genuinely excited to see where it takes me. That's right, I'm in it for me. Godspeed, Forgers. Nice.